What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the New York Ranger franchise mode. Last episode, we went through year four playoffs, ended up losing to the eventual Stanley Cup champions in the second round, Pittsburgh Penguins. Went through the draft, went through the offseason, had a pretty interesting draft. Drafted a medium league goalie in the first round, then a medium elite right wing in the third round, I believe, maybe fourth. And then made some trades. We shipped off Chris Cryer to Boston, even though he had a no movement clause. But we pretended that we asked him to waive it, and we shipped him back to his hometown. And then we shipped away Niels Lundqvist to clear up a little bit more money. And we then got, then signed Mark Shifley to a three-year deal worth $12 million a year. Now, I'll show you a reason why I'm kind of hoping I signed a two-year deal. But we'll show you that in a second. Now, we are simulated halfway, almost up until the deadline of year number five. Now, last year, of course, we hired a new coach. He gave us a lot more chemistry. But we kind of struggled scoring. That's not the case this year. Actually, before I show you the stats, let me show you the lines because I forgot about that. So these have been the lines we've been rocking with. We have Kraftsoff, Sebastian Kako, plus three. Panarin, Shifley, and Lafreniere, plus three. We have Levy, Alton, and Heedle, and uh, Raddy, only a plus one. Then we have Lemieux, Barron, and Gunnarsson, a plus three on the fourth line. Defensively, I just switched this up. I put Truba and D'Angelo on the top line just because D'Angelo's been kind of having a really rough season scoring-wise. So we're going to put him up with Truba. Then we have Adam, Pellick, and Fox, who Fox has been having a great year now, of now having a plus five chem. And then we have Sebastian Ajo and Paul Bull, who is a meaningly defensive defenseman who we drafted in the third round in 2023, who I want to develop, and he's been playing pretty well with a plus 13 and six, any six points. But he doesn't really fit well with this coach, so he might be expendable. We'll see. Uh, if you want to just take a look at the power plays, I actually want to make one switch to power plays. Just do that. Plus three, plus three around. Goalies, of course, we have Shesterkin and Henrik Lundqvist. So those are the, that's been the lineup we've been rocking with. Now, to show you the stats, we've been scoring very well. Panarin leading the way with 65. Shifley, actually, they're tied for 65. 61 for Kako, 59, 54. We have, what, two, four, six, eight. Eight players over the 40-point mark. Raddy's kind of struggling. He doesn't really have chemistry. But like I said, he will he might be expendable after next year. Same thing with Barron. I might keep Barron just because he's 80, he grew to an 87. And for him on the fourth, I mean, we play him on the fourth line. You know, I just feel like we need him for if we can win the cup. And if we lose him for nothing, that kind of sucks. But maybe we could try to trade his rights. And you can just see, and this is what I mean by D'Angelo. He has 16 points. Not really playing too well. He is still a plus two, not bad. Adam Fox, though, 47 points. Having his coming out party. And goaltenders. Shesterkin's been playing very well with the 9 one one save percentage, which in NHL, that's pretty good. NHL uh, 21. So, for this episode, we will simulate. I don't know if we'll do the playoffs. We might do the playoffs. Yeah, I think we'll go to the deadline, then do the playoffs. I don't have to go through the whole deadline. So, like, if I don't really know if I want to make it much trades. But this is where we stand. So, Mark Shifley, we gave him a three-year deal. Now, after two years, we have to re-sign Panarin and Kako. So, and Truba. So, if we might look, after the first two years, we might have to look to trade Shifley. Plus, he might even drop. But I'm sure he'll still have high enough value. But that $12 million might be a little tough to trade certain places place of a cap. So Morgan Barron does want an extension. We really don't have the money. He wants $9 million. I don't want to commit to him long term. Yes, he's still going to be good. But, you know, we already have Zabanjad locked up. And it's whatever. D'Angelo, of course, resigned to a 6.5 extension last season. Raddy does, last episode, Raddy doesn't want an extension. He wants $6 million for two years, which isn't bad. But he just hasn't really been fitting all too well ever since, I think, our new coach. And I think that's really just them two. So them two, they are on the hot seat. At two Rathi, obviously, we could qualify him at the end of the season and then possibly trade his rights to a team or trade him at the draft. But Morgan Barron, I think we have we have both of them on the trading block. But Morgan Barron, if, if, if it's our good trade and if we could get a good replacement for him at the deadline, we'll look to deal him at the deadline. So that's our, tr I don't know why I have Truba up there. I think they might have thro threw him up there. So let me take Truba off. Just those two. And Raddy, of course, 
Like I said, if a team wants to give up a top 10 pick for Eddie, I'll do that. So there is one trade I want to make to regain an asset that we sent away last trade, last trade deadline. And we're going to come to Toronto and the focal point, it seems like, in the William Nylander trade was Brain Schneider, who they really want, who they want to dump now. He's 23, 70 overall. He fits top four defensive pairings. But I just want Brain Schneider because I, I wanted to develop him. So we're going to look to get him back. And they want two thirds for him, and I'm going to accept that, no doubt about it. I really want Schneider back. And now I might look to move. I might see if Schneider fits better than, uh, what's it called, Bull at the moment. Because then Bull could go to the AHL, he could finish the season. And Schneider obviously is better. Looks like we have to call him up. But if maybe we wanted to look to trade Truba and we could keep Schneider, we could do that. I really don't know. We'll have to see. So let's call Braden Schneider up. Let's just see where he fits. He fits top four. I want to see what he's like on the second pairing. I mean the third pairing. Scratched. Here we go. So Braden Schneider. Okay, so he does fit third pairing. Now he fits the third pairing better than Bull. Bull, like I said, doesn't really fit too well. So he probably will still get a plus three with Sebastian Ajo. So let's exchange him for Brain Schneider. And Schneider still does get a plus three. I just want to see if he really fits anywhere else. He does, but just not really with the right teammates. But a plus three with Schneider and Sebastian Ajo. So that will be our bottom pairing. Plus Schneider's a little bit better right now. I just want to see. I think we had Bowl on the penalty kill. So did Schneider, Schneider, no. He's. I think it was still. It was zero when we had Schneider there in the first place. So that's fine. Okay. So we got Brand Schneider. That's awesome. We got him back. He's rocking number five. Well, I think that's fine with for him. And let's just send Bowl down. He'll finish the year in the AHL. And by the time, like I said, he doesn't really fit. And now since Schneider fits a lot better than him, maybe Bull could be expendable down the road. Like I said, he was only a third-round pick. So if we could get something really well for him, that would be pretty nice. So let me just best lines it in the AHL. So Bull's playing with Pullman. They're Bolt 2. I'm just going to drop. I just don't want them to have... Try to get chemistry there. Okay, that's fine. So Paul Bull... Good, good, good. Okay. So I think that's all I wanted to do. I think we'll simulate up to the deadline now. And it's a couple days away. So let's simulate up to this Winnipeg game. So we are actually, I think, tied for first. Well, we might now be in first now. Buffalo has been having a good season. They we were, Before I just started simulating these first two games, we were both at 83 points. And we're having a really good year. Panera's up to 71 points. We have 89 points where Buffalo has 89. So Buffalo and us are really neck and neck. Luckily, we won't have to play them until possibly the Eastern Conference Finals. If they make it and we make it, hopefully they don't. So last game against until the deadline to win. So we will be a buyer. Actually, should we be a conservative buyer? We'll be a con I mean, I don't really think it matters, but we'll be a conservative buyer just because we don't know if we want to, you know, mess up this team or whatever. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this trade deadline. Holy smoke. Pavel Buchnevich. Yeah, he really, he really grew. Blake. Oh, that's the top 10. Oh my goodness. <laughs> A French. Hold on. Let me find trade. Oh, okay. But do we want to try? Do we really want to try to get Leon Dreisaitl? Um, I'm just trying to see who could. I'm really intrigued. Oh my God! Who got? Oh, I thought they someone they got traded. But Brandon Saad, exchange for Jeff Skinner, Ekblad. I wouldn't mind Tom Wilson, Galchenyuk. Galchenyuk's 87. Blake Wheeler would be a pretty nice power forward as a rental, but they don't want anything for him. Dominic Kubalik is on a nice two-year deal, first-round draft pick. I have that. What are they? Wow, that's such a terrible trade. The EA, the EA system in this is just ridiculous. But should we try to... Ooh, trade or Buffalo, what do they... Wait, Buffalo just trade Jeff Skinner. Am I wrong? They trade a first. They get Brand Rust. Okay, so they, Buffalo's loading up a little bit. Jonathan Duran's on a long-term extension. Don't want him. 
Nugent Hopkins on a long extension. Don't want him. Hampus Lindholm. They don't want anything from us. Kenny Malkin, who's actually having a really good year. They don't want anything from us. Lindholm, Max Domi, Thatcher Demko. Peyton Krebs. Looks like they Vegas just wasn't able to sign him. Trailer Boston Bruins trade Marchant Arizona exchange for a first. Wow. I think if we do if we do this, we're gonna have to retain him. Now we're giving them. Oh, but they're gonna be. Oh, we need we need we need Baron in this. We need Baron in this. I don't want to give up Heedle. Just because we have Heedle signed, so we need Baron in this. Let's try to get rid of the first. Let's just try to do that. They're getting three elite players and a good defensive prospect and a good i mean they're getting two elite an elite goaltending on the come up two really good elite players and a good center oh my goodness do they want the first if they don't do this i think i there's nothing else i could do this is look at the value it's crazy okay i don't really know what else there is to do I think they are just, I, I think I've given them pretty fair offers. I think I'm going to pull out of the dry sidle deal. Sorry, no can do. Um, Hasn't really been too many big trades. Now we have Ranton, who's a sniper too. Edmonton trades seconds. Did they, wait, where's dry sidle? Did they take him off the trade block or did they trade him? I guess they just took him off the trading block. Unless they trade him and I was just trying to trade for him when they already trade him. I'm so confused. Huh. Let me see. Let me see. So I guess for some reason, since we couldn't match their crazy price offer, they took him off the trading block. Let me see. Where are the Oilers? Carter Hart. Oh, that's Garrett Hart. <laughs> thought it was Carter Hart. Oilers. I don't think he's on the trading block anymore. Wow, they took, look, look at that, they took Drysaddle off the training block. That's interesting. And now Klinberg's off the training block too, so I guess they kind of think now they're, I don't know. Now they're, conser now they're a conservative buyer, so they, they shifted their, what's it called? They shifted their, uh, their status. That's interesting. So now, Colo do we want to try to, well, it's going to be the same thing. Now he fits power play one, I mean power play. But same type deal here. You know, do they don't want Ratty or Baron. That sucks. Why not? They don't want Ratty. But like I said, we're going to have to. Ratty and Baron. With them retaining some of the cap. Now, they might accept this right off the bat. I just don't know how much... Money they have to retain for us to be good. But obviously, Ranton is making a lot more. Okay. These tra these trades are just not going through. I don't know what else to do. So, it looks like we're not going to get any really big players. Um, Is there any, like, depth guys we could try to get? Shea Theodore. Ooh. I'm a big fan of Shea Theodore. They want a top forward prospect. Like, you don't think they would be asking for Aturati. Like, I don't understand. Now, they want him. Okay, this would go through. But also, can we try to get... Wow, Julian Goche has got a nice value on their team. Payne Krebs, who's... I don't, well, I don't even think he could play for us. But he's an 85 left wing. What is he, a playmaker? Yeah, he could be really deadly down them. So what if we try to get Krebs too? That's a pretty good trade. So Shane Theodore, I don't really know where he'll slot in. Does he fit? Okay, I mean, obviously, maybe we would put him on, put him on a third pairing instead of Schneider now, or maybe go or take out Aho and Peyton Krebs. Obviously, I don't think he could play with us this year just because I think he hasn't been signed. But he's definitely a good asset to have. And I think that's a pretty good trade for Rowdy, and that we could probably bring back Theodore, because he might be asking for less than what he's making now, because what is his stats looking like? 27 points, 30. Yeah, he hasn't really been scoring too much. 
I like this trade a lot. Um, do we want to shift the attention, though, and trade away Morgan Barron instead? They don't want Barron, and it wouldn't go through. Because I'm thinking, because we don't, because we could qualify Ratty. But I think we're going to do this. They're a conservative seller. It seems like they kind of want to get younger, but it seems like they can't come to a contract agreement with Peyton Krebs. So this is where we're going to trade out to Ratty. I like this trade a lot. We get more defensive help, who actually we could probably keep Shade Theodore after the season. And we also bring in Peyton Krebs. So hopefully it'll go through. We'll have to see. All right. This will go through. And there is our big trade of the tr trade. Oh, Lindholm traded to Vegas exchange for Kyle Turvis. Wait, so Lindholm, so Lindholm just got traded to Vegas. But Vegas then just traded us. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else we want to do? I don't think so. Is this Rantanen? Foster... To Boston, I guess Ranton just got taken off the training block because I don't think he got traded. Hoffman's a defensive defenseman, but he's locked up. Connor Timmins would be pretty interesting too. They want a top goalie prospect. We have a goalie prospect that they would. I'm surprised they're not asking for. Um, just trying to see if there's anybody who's like cheap, and it could probably fit our team down the road. Shankar's making fun. No, he's probably not gonna fit with his cap. I like that trade a lot. So Vegas, of course, are looks like they're trying to get younger. They get a better uh, or a stud player. And uh, what's his name? And Raddy, who hopefully they'll play more than we did. Max, Le Max Lejoie is a defensive defenseman. They want a fifth and a seventh for him. Is, is that worth taking a chance on him? Because maybe he could be a defensive defenseman that really fits. Plus, Adam Pellick doesn't want an extension next year. So he can maybe play with Adam Fox. I'm going to do this. I think that's actually a pretty good trade. Sebastian Ajo is waiver eligible. Why? Oh, I kind of want to... I kind of want to... What's it called? I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll really have to see with this. I think... What time is it? It's 11.44. I don't think there's really anything else I want to do. So I'm going to exit the... Let me just see. What the heck? Okay. Okay, so I'm going to exit the trade deadline. Hold on, we have one more trade from the Canes. They send a third and ten up to Vegas exchange for, if I could see with the saw on the way, a third. Okay, so I don't really know what Vegas' approach is. So I'm going to exit the deadline. Obviously, we could see other trades that happened after it. Brett Connolly, I don't care. Okay, so... Now, I think, doesn't our lines always always get reset at the deadline? Yes. So, let me edit the lines. So, here's the lineup. It's pretty much the same. Um, we have to have Forsback Carlson play up with this team. I don't know if maybe we could move him around to get a plus somewhere else. If Lemieux gave that line a plus three, that would be cool. For some reason, just because it's a really tight cap, I can't move anybody. Defensively, we have Pelic, Fox, Truba, Theodore, which is a great pairing. And then we have D'Angelo, Schneider, um, which is only a plus one. But I like this plus three pairing of this. I think it could be a really nice shutdown pair. And then goalies is pretty much the same. Penalty kill is pretty much the same. And power play, all that. So, with uh, Peyton Krebs, like he's, he's an RFA. So, past the defend first deadline. So, he's not eligible to play. So, we won't be able to sign him until next offseason. But we do have his rights. And if... He's a playmaker who can maybe work. So, I think from here on out, we will simulate to the end of the season. Now, we're kind of running on a long episode. Like I said, I took a lot of time trying to get Leon Dreisaitl. So, maybe I'll look to cut that up a little bit. But, I kind of want to do the playoffs right now. I'm kind of excited. Which, I think I'll actually just do. Screw it. I'm gonna, We'll do the playoffs this episode. Hopefully... We can continue our dominance we've had this off this season. Another good thing, obviously we just got rid of somebody, but I feel like we improved a little bit on the defensive side, of course. A little bit worse on the offensive side, getting rid of Ratty, but getting a shade dude is really big too. 
So, are we leading the league in points? We're 111. What do the Sabres have? Sabres always... Oh, no, they're not showing us. I think they had one. I don't know. They're not showing us. But 115-point season. That's pretty big with one more game to go. Our ten Ooh, Mark Scheifele with 95 points in his first season in the Ranger. Sharks have 100. Wild. Ooh, the Sabres kind of dropped off. Now the Ca Canadians are better than them. So... Let's just simulate this last game, which is a 75-75 win. Let's just take a look at the stats. Mark Scheifele with 96 points in his first season with the Rangers. Panarin had 45 goals, 91 points. Lafreniere, 87. Adam Fox, 67. Huge. Advantage in 72, 86. So, yeah, we really scored goals this year. Krasov with 52. Shea Theodore, I think, actually had... 15 points, 20 games for Theodore. It's not bad whatsoever. Gunnarsson, 31. Heedle. D'Angelo, actually, okay. D'Angelo played a little bit better. Seems like on that bottom pair line. Second half of the season. Lemieux with 25. Pelic, 17. Truba. What? Pelic at 25 points? Wow. Aho, who's not really playing anymore. Brain Schneider, who played 80 games? What? I don't really know about that now. He only played 24. What's a plus four? It's six points. Not bad. And goalies, 909, 46 wins. That might be leading the way with wins, at least. That's a lot of wins. Yes, he is leading the way, and he's pretty... Hey, Igor Shosturkin might look, be looking to win his net first... Uh, what's it called? His second... Uh, Vesna. Adam Fox is the top... Three in scoring. Looks like Quinn Hughes will win another uh, Norris. And all skaters. Oh, my God. Kakanyemi and Caulfield had a sick year. But Shifley was up there, too. Caulfield at 50. Yeah, of course. But Panarin with 45 goals. That is big. And Panarin is kind of, you know, he's getting old. He's down to a 90 overall. So, we really, hopefully, we can win sooner rather than later. Because he was a 93 last season. So, Let's see who our first round opponent is. I think it might be the Hurricanes from the look of it. Or it might be... It's Ottawa. So back-to-back -back years we're playing Ottawa. It looks like they had a worse year this year than last. Last year we beat them in f five games. So let me... Actually, I'm just trying to think. I'm thinking of moving everybody from here down. And then this third line will have plus three. Force back, but doesn't get a plus one. Nah, whatever. Never mind. So put that all back. Okay, so let's take a look at Ottawa. Um, see if they, of course, they had a pretty good offense last year. We seems like we really um kind of put the clamps on them. But let's see if they made any other moves. But like I said, it looked like they had a pretty... So they still have Taylor Hall, Brady Kachuk. Top six is very nice. Even the third pairing is very nice. So they still have a really good offense. And their center core is pretty nasty. Defensively, they have Shabbat, Brandstrom. Other than that, really just them two and Jake Bean. And goalies, I'm sure they still have Matt Murray. No, they have Philip Gustafson. So 84 overall. Hopefully we can look to put the pressure on him. So, I just want to check, just in case. Goalies. Okay. So, let's hop right into the playoffs. Back-to-back -back years playing Ottawa in the first round. Hopefully, we could get off to a hot start. Game number one, first round. Like I said, they had a pretty bad year. But still squeaked in. So, first period. Wow. Regular season doesn't mean anything. Second period. Wow. Wow. They really came in and cooked us. Regular season doesn't mean anything. I really might have just jinxed that, but it's only one game. Hopefully we can bounce back here in game number two, which I think we really need to because I don't like going down 2-0. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. We're really dominating the shot. Second period, there it is, Artemi Panarin. Let's just play a defensive game, maybe add another goal. It's a big penalty kill. Hit the 14-minute mark. This will be a nice power play if we could put one in. We don't. Nine minute mark. Eight. Five minutes. Four. Hey, Morgan Barron puts an insurance marker goal in. And it looks like we're going to close this one out, winning 2 0 as Igor Shesterkin gets the shutout. Very, very nice. So, 
going to Ottawa with a 1-1 lead. Let's see if we could... I think actually last season we lost the first game. We lost one of the first two, and then we I think won the next three. So hopefully we can have a replicate, replicate that. It'll be nice to get a game three win right here. So first period, 1-0. Vitaly Krasov on Gustafsson. Second period, 2-1. Tim Stutzla has a nice two-goal period. Hopefully we can bounce back here and tie it up. Hopefully have a nice third period surge and a five on three power play that we kill off. I thought that would kill us, but we're hitting, getting close to the four, three, two, and Colin White puts in the empty net and we are going to drop game number three. Not looking too hot. I think I'm going to change. Should I look to change lines around? Kind of stack up. Put Panarin on the top line. Still get a plus three. And you know what? I'm actually going to move these guys up to get them more playing time. I think we'll do that. We'll kind of bump crafts off down. But this line is still nasty enough to uh, score. So let's see what this game number four entitles. Because how have they been scoring too much? Four goals in three games. So we really got to get some goals going here. With Krasov obviously leading the weight in points, though. But first period, we got to get this win. 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period. 1-2. to two. Uh, Third period, nice power play goal would be awesome, which we don't get it. And Ottawa, Taylor Hall gives them an insurance marker. And they're on a power play. This is not going well, this is very, very frustrating. This reminds me of the Ducks franchise, and we drop game number four, and we are down three to one in the first round. Ugh. This sucks. Um, I think I'm going to have to try to move. I don't know what to do. Ah, just leave it like that. I think I'll change the defense around. I'll bump Theodore up. And we'll bump uh, D'Angelo up. Pelican Shiner, sure. To try to help us get a spark, we're trying to move stuff around. Scoring one goal in the past, two, one goal in each of the past two games. Down 3-1. This is where we plant the seed and come back. First period. 3-1. There we go. Finally have a nice scoring period. Second period. Oh my goodness gracious. You've got to be kidding me. What a collapse. We had a 3-1 first period. They score four goals in the second. Now they're up two goals. And that looks like that's going to be the season. Oh man. Wow. Wow. Why is Lundqvist in net? Why did they take... Oh my goodness. Why did you pull Shesterkin? Oh my goodness gracious. And, uh, and that is that. We lose. And it looks like I jinxed it saying Ottawa didn't have such a good season. But... Wow. What a season we had scoring wise. But... Doesn't seem like that was the case, as in the playoffs we have another disappointing, a uh, very disappointing result, losing the first round this time uh, in year number five. So, and the Ottawa Senators won the Stanley Cup. Oh my goodness! Past two years, we've lost to the Stanley Cup champs. Boston jumps up 12 to 1. Oh my god. Let's see if Lundquist called it a career. Ovechkin called it a career. I don't think. Oh no, he beat. Oh no. Oh yeah, he did. He beat. I think he beat Gretzky's record. Gretzky had what? 898, I think, or something like that? Yeah. So. Uh, and goalies. Henrik Lundquist is still sticking around. Seems like he wants to win with the Rangers. I think we might have to reconstruct this team at the end of this 
after the draft, I'm thinking like we made the big uh, free agent move for Shifley. If there's another, I'm actually going to go through the draft real quick. Just because I want to get the, oh, we have to go through the resign phase. We're already in the draft, so we can't go back. So, uh, let's just go through this real quick. Have that I've always been going through it. I think we're gonna have to look to sacrifice certain, sacrifice players. Medium top D. Uh. Cox, 5'9". We're going to go Ruslan Glebov. Oh, medium top. Ah, la, 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 la. I think we're going to have to maybe look to move some guys. Um, I'll take the sniper. That's fine. We're going to have to look to make some, I think, some, if there's, Stars on the train block. We're gonna, like I said, I I really want to get the Stanley Cup. We're really close, but no cigar. You know, we still have a big chunk of our core still locked in. Um, I'll go right D. Robinson Hartman. Oh, me him elite defensive defensive. And so someone like that right now, we might have to look to trade for possibly um something. Can I look at the train block? Offer a trade maybe. I just want to see who's out there on the trading block real quick. So Patrick Kane's on the trading block. Might look might have to look to add him to the team. Like I said, we're gonna to have to look at the money situation. He's only 86, he's making 12 million. Okay, he's not worth that. But Dylan Strom, what is his overall? He's 86, making 9 million for five more years. He's a playmaking center. We don't need him. We already have like Paranko, O'Reilly, Shen. We have to look at them. Bertuzzi. Just trying to see if there's anybody really, really big. Doesn't look like it. You know, Victor Rask. Yeah. We're going to have to see, obviously, with free agency. Oh, do I have the pick? Okay, let's. Uh, maybe we'll actually kind of go through. Amir Esposito. Okay, we'll go. Maybe we'll go with the resign phase because I really want to see. I really want to see what's it called, the free agents, because like I said, I might have to kind of go back to instead of trying to build with our core. Obviously, we still have our core, but we're gonna have to look to maybe sign some free agents. I'm just trying to get through this draft really quickly, and I think a guy who might be on the hot seat is Tony D'Angelo. You know, he's not really fitting anymore, so we might look to have to move him. To bring in somebody who's maybe better and also could fit our team. But we also have Aho gets but yeah, but Aho is just not that, you know, he's not that good. He just gets the chemistry low elite in the sixth round. You really can't ask for anything better. The seventh round here, I'm just gonna take Christopher Faust, whatever. He's a star, and he's low top nine power for that's fine. Sim down, we have another pick. Look at that. Oh wow, a low elite. That's big in the seventh round. Uh, I'm just gonna take a star. Should we take a goalie? I'll take left wing. We already have too many goalies. We might have to look to trade some of those medium elite goalie prospects that we have. Like I said, I'm going to try to build, just make a stack team because we have so many assets, younger assets too, along with the assets that we're using in our team right now. So, re-sign phase. Um, NHL associate coach. Um, he's been good. I actually have a feeling he's not going to want. So you know what? He's probably not going to want to be the associate coach. So we're going to fire Taze. We'll have to find another re-signed goalie coach. No. Whatever. Yeah, just fire him too. And who else? We have to re-sign our AHL head coach. And our AHL associate coach. Sure. See if they accept. If not, then we'll. I'll look. I'll look at the all that after. Let me just give the scouts contracts. Actually, get rid. Don't even sign him. NHL Pacific, sure, and WHL. Terrible scout, but whatever. Okay, so resign phase. Obviously, we still have Peyton Krebs, who we'll see what kind of contract he wants. 
We still we have nine million in cap space. So Morgan Barron, if we want to try to sign him, he wants nine point eight. We only have nine point two. So it looks like Morgan Barron's testing open market. Sorry. Shea Theodore is eighty five. He wants six point seven. What? Might have to be looking at a one year deal with him. Like I said, if we could get him signed, you know, and then if you know, because we're all about building this team. So, Peyton Krebs. Let me just see what he wants. He wants five million. He hasn't played one game with us. We could kind of try to bridge deal him at four. Let me just see who needs a contract. So it looks like Morgan Barron is going to test open market. I don't have money for him. Shea Theodore. Um, can I get him at six million from one year? Lejoie. That's fine with me. He actually might be able to play. And Peyton Krebs. I'll do one year at four million. He still gets his R. He still has his RFA, and that's a good price for a guy who probably fit in and help us now. So we'll do that four million at one year. Uh, the rest of these guys are just AHL guys who you know we don't have to sign every single one. But let me just see if these two guys will sign. Actually, we don't have enough money for both of them. That's ten million. Okay, I don't really know. I don't really care that these coaches are not accepting whatever. But we could still. All right, well, now maybe we should have tried to sign, uh, what's his name, Theodore before before Krebs. We still have $6 million. I mean, if he wants to take a pay cut, I'll give him the remaining money we have. But if not, then I guess Shade Theodore is testing off the market. We can maybe try to come back to him and try to get him. Uh... Okay, whatever. You know what? Sim to free agency. I don't really care about all the. Oh, actually, hold on. Oh, branch, branch trying to use a contract. Oh my goodness gracious! Thank God. You know what? Like I said, forget whatever. Forget Shay Theodore. So Baron Scout out. Pelic. Pelic is one extension. He's out. Whatever. Schneider. How can I forget about you, Schneider? I'll give Schneider uh, three years at one million. That's good. So as his RFA, that's awesome. And Cooley will bring back Tarnstrom will bring back Rondinen. What does Zaha want? What does he want? Ah, we'll let Aha walk. Goalies, I don't think we really have. Just AHL guys. Ingram will resign. Sure. And Lundqvist wants to come back. Uh, we'll give him one more year. And then we have a meeting to lead. Yes, that we got to get signed. And he could play in the AHL. I think that's fine for all those contracts. Hopefully everybody accepts. Okay, so Lundqvist doesn't want to be a backup. It's whatever. He can... I don't care. <laughs> like, you're 43 years old. Like, really? All right, so let me take a look at... I'm going to take a look at the free agents, and then we'll take a look at players who we might have to move to get some guys. So we have Ivan Provorov, who wants $14 million. Evgeny Kuznetsov. Rantanen, who's a free agent. Morgan Barron, who, yes, we let go. Okay, Buchnevich is in 80. He wants 9 million. You don't need to ride Malkin. He wants two years, but maybe we could get him at. Oh, he's only 83, though. We have a B. Eves, who's a two ways RFA. Okay, so it's not Steven Stamkos. Ooh! That's actually one I really wanted to kind of experiment with. That's pretty cool. But we could get someone like Stamkos and play him at the wing. Like I said, for a year, if we could fit it. Aaron Ekblad, too. Oh, my God, there's so many guys. How much cap space? We have six, so we're not too far off. Anton Lundahl is a $7 million player who's a RFA. Atu Rat wow, Atu Ratti hit RFA. Shea Theodore, of course, is an RFA. Unless we just, like, say, forget Theodore and try to go with, uh, you know, what's his name? Eggvist RFA. Go with... Uh, or Hampus Lindholm, too. He's cheaper than Theodore, but he wants four years. Ricard Raquel, we could bring him back. 
like I said, is okay. So Nicholas Backstrom's 86, only 1 million. That's actually not a bad contract for him either. So there's a lot of players here. And I'm, I'll have to go through and see which ones we'll, we could look to, you know, that will help us. Obviously, there are a lot. But I'm also going to take a look at what players you might have to move. Um, I think Truba, this is like Truba's last year of his contract. And he has a modified no trade clause. So we could so we could ask, you know, Truba to submit a team list. If we can get someone better than him. If not, we might as well stick with him for the year. But if we have to get rid of that money, we will. I think D'Angelo could be on the hot seat too to get rid of that 6.5. Kako is fine. Adam Fox is fine. Heedle might be on the hot seat too. Krebs, to be honest with you, might be on the hot seat just because Kraftsoff is really good now. And Schneider, okay. And goalies, Shesterkin, we're keeping a 970. Okay. Yeah, so guys, like, yeah. So. Let me just take a look at the train block, see if there's anything crazy. Because we do have players we can move. Like Colton Perenko, I just want to see. Does he fit with our team? He's also making he's making five million. It's not too bad for how many more years? Three. Doesn't really fit with Jeffrey Hope's system. Okay. Rasmussen. Okay, there's nothing. Ooh, Roman Yossi. Wow. Nashville looks like they want to kind of unload. Yossi was kind of old at 35. He has three more years. I'm not really in love with that. Ryan Ellis, of course. Oh, is it two-way? I thought Ryan Ellis was an offensive defenseman. All right. Well, they're not going to fit. It's all about fit and then money and then, I guess, his overall game. Bo Horvat. <laughs> Vancouver wants to trade. Now, I think he's a two-way centerman. Doesn't really fit anywhere, so he's not going to really be good. Victor Rask. Okay, so there's not really anything in the trade market. Maybe there is. Maybe I just didn't really look too hard enough. Let me take a look at the free agents to see who will fit a lot with our scheme. Um, Provorov, I think, is way, way too much. He's insane. He doesn't really fit, so that's off. I think Kuznetsov would be a very cool one. He's not really... Ranton, of course, a sniper... Obviously, he's going to be a $10 million player. I think for a one-year contract, Steven, or two year, he wants two years, but even just like a one-year, Steven Samkos would be very good. How has he been... Oh, not Kuz. No, what did I just do? Yeah. Steven Samkos, how's he been simming? Because I'm going to have to think about which lines, you know, where these guys will play. And Aaron Ekblad, like I said, if we, we could get him at $7 million, Possibly we have some competition. So if we could trade Truba and then get Aaron Ekblad, and Ekblad only fits defensive pairing three, so I don't really know if he would work too too well. Obviously, if we want to bring back Theodore, and we also have Hampus Lindholm, who probably who actually could looks like he fits too. But a 5.9 cap, maybe I'm looking at more like a two-year deal. So. Let me know who you guys think we should go after. I'll kind of take a look and see each player and kind of get my own opinion. Like I said, we're going to try to build this team up next year because we're kind of getting old with, like, Panera and them. But uh hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.